what will be those learning zones? What will be those subtle changes that Ireland might look to apply in the next Six Nations campaign and beyond? Yeah, I think face to that that um, type of defence, I think is one. I think you'll see a lot of nations having a look at what New Zealand did and how they denied Ireland's attacking framework um, the ability to score tries, which they do at such a facile rate throughout their 17 consecutive wins. So I think that's one, trying to find a little bit more balance in their game, potentially. I think possibly, uh, and I think we will see this with Crowley as a genuine running threat at 10 as well, particularly with passive defensive systems. I, I think if we can play a little bit later at the line, like Johnny Johnny did look, I thought, fatigued towards the end of the game. I thought it was absolutely right for him to stay on the field because he was he was moving Ireland around the pitch excellently well. But I think having a having the ability to go at the line as a 10 and with, with real pace and, and provide a, a threat there, I think could be could be a change in dynamic possibly for Ireland. Um, and it's hard to say. It's hard to pick too many holes in, in what has been a brilliant, brilliant Ireland team over the last 18 months. I think there is absolutely psychological implications for not getting past the quarterfinal. I don't care what people, the players come out and say in the press. 100% until they crack that seal, it's going to be a, an impingement for the team. Um, it was the same as beating the All Blacks. It took so long to do. There were some brilliant performances dotted in there time and time again. But when it came to the real crunch moments, we just couldn't find a way to get over the line. And that type of belief doesn't really happen until you go and do it. Um, so I think that is, I think that is definitely, while well, Ireland did have a brilliant performance and actually Morgan Turnoui on Stan Sports said over here um, today, it was the greatest ever quarterfinal defeat by a team. Uh, and he's referencing Ireland as possibly the best attacking team he's ever seen. So that's coming from from the Southern Hemisphere. So <clears throat> it's not as if they massively underperformed. I think there's a, probably just a couple of critical moments. I think the line out misfiring at crucial times in the 22, I think possibly gave New Zealand a little bit of belief as well and enabled them to to build that 13-0 scoreline. And there, there's no better team in world rugby that once they get a lead that they could sustain a lead. And I thought that was, if Ireland had gone and nailed them all try early on, I think that would have increased the Irish players' belief and probably create, created an element of doubt in the New Zealand players. So I don't, I don't think, you can't measure it, but I don't think it can be underestimated, the the psychological impacts of not doing something for the first time. And I think, I think yeah, the players won't admit it to it publicly, but I think another quarterfinal defeat is going to play at their minds and um, they're going to have to find a way to get past it. And those opening exchanges are just so crucial, especially when you're trying to get over that hurdle. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you, you think about it, yeah, they did. They messed up a line out in, in the 22. The scrum penalty that went against them when really it, it should have been a scrum penalty for Ireland. They did a, a good job in that scrum. Assistant referee calls in that Porter's on the angle when it's, it's Lomax who leads him in. I think every single scrum expert who really knows that area is, is in agreement on that. And that's 3-0 to Ireland. And it just settles you in and you... You get going mm. from there, and that that was unfortunate. That was out of their hands, but maybe Keenan getting that ball into to Lowe's hands under in, immense pressure. Of course, when he when he offloads in the left corner, that goes to hand, and, and it's a very different game. But one of the things I've been thinking about as well, and we are we are nitpicking here. Ireland have been absolutely brilliant, but they want to be better. One of the things that maybe could be improved is slightly tailoring things for op- opposition, slightly more. Sorry, of course they analyze and they go into detail and they try and pick out flaws in the opposition but they've been very almost boastful about saying this is what we do and I think that is a strength that they're more focused on themselves I I, I think it's great that our sides aren't cowed by the opposition or over obsessed with the opposition but you saw how tailored the All Blacks plan was for, for Ireland and how it worked I'm not saying they have to go to that degree in, in every game but just a little more I suppose um, little more ploys to to pick out a couple of weaknesses that they they've seen, and and that means you take away time on the training pitch from what you want to do, of course, and you've got to get that balance right. And it's a it's a slippery slope, maybe, and and you don't want to come over obsessed again with opposition and going through in minor detail every single thing they do. But to have those little weapons up your sleeve, as New Zealand had with that line out play, for example, really specific plan based on a really really specific part 
of Ireland's game to put the players in a position where they they were deeply uncomfortable and weren't familiar with it in any way. I thought that was really smart coaching. Um, and maybe Ireland can have a, a small bit more of that without returning to the former element of, of being too robotic or too obsessed with the opposition. 